Sup you phonies, how's it going? Welcome to another visual effects video. Today we're gonna work on a intrusion of cockroaches. This scene was part of my intrusion short film. It's a horror film about a girl who killed a few bugs and they get their revenge. This shot in particular was quite difficult and it took me way longer than necessary because there is no real tutorials on that until now. So in order to make this visual effect, we need a couple of things. We need to shoot our footage, camera track it, make the particle simulation, model the cockroaches, animate the cockroaches, light it and composite it. And in this video, we're gonna focus on making the particles and animate them properly. We're doing this in Blender. I just started my Blender scene. This is what it looks like for me. Yours might look a little different depending on your default setup. Bro, you have a cube here but we're gonna start like that. So the first thing we need is a ground, something where our cockroaches can walk on. So I'm just gonna create a plane and scale it onto the Y axis. That should be enough. They're gonna walk from one side to the other. Let's move our camera back a little so we kind of get a similar angle like we had in our film. Great. We're gonna turn my little Miha around because that's where she was walking not that it matters and we're gonna animate him so he's gonna walk from here do 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 walk over there so with him selected I go on item hover over location hit I and since we only want him to walk on the Y axis I go under my graph editor if you don't have it here click on this one and graph editor now we see that I created a keyframe here I go under the keyframes I'm gonna delete the Z location and the X location because I only need the Y. Now I'm gonna go to let's say frame 200, change the Y value and instead of hovering over here and hit I again because that would create keyframes for X and Z also, I'm just gonna hover over my graph editor, hit I and now I can insert a keyframe for all channels, only selected channels, active channels at cursor or selected channels at origin and we want only selected channels but of course you need to select your y-axis first now my little Miha is going from A to B it's easing in right now we don't want that so we hover over the graph editor hit T and hit linear so it just goes from A to B great we're gonna need him because he is gonna be the goal for our particles in case you don't know what I'm talking about Particles, they come in different shapes and animations. And what we're gonna use today are void particles. Void particles are used a lot for like bird animations. If you have a flock of birds, uh, like Phil Flock, like a flock of birds and they're flying around somewhere in the background, they're not very detailed, but you can still see them and you want to control where they're going, they use void particles. And our little Miha here is gonna be the goal for our void particles. So wherever they are, they're gonna try to chase him. But you're gonna see that in a second. First, we need to create our particle emitter. I'm gonna move my 3D cursor to the beginning here. I do that with Shift and right click and Shift A to create another mesh plane. I'm gonna scale it down on the, Z, uh, on the Y axis and uh, that should be okay. Every time you change something scale, you have to apply it. So Control A and apply the scale. We're gonna do the same thing for the ground. Control A, apply the scale. I'm gonna also go through a few mistakes uh, which happen so you kind of learn while I make them. Like for example, I didn't make my ground a collision object yet. That means that our particles are gonna fall through the ground. But let's create the particles first. We're gonna select our plane here. Let's call this particle emitter now on the right here we're gonna hover over particle properties select it and now when we hit on plus we already created a particle system so now when we are in the very first frame and play it we can see particles are being emitted great first step now you can see that they're all falling through the ground because we don't have a collision object and for them and that's what this plane is for we click on the plane go on physics properties and collision that's all you need to do really now when you go to the very first frame you play it you see that they're not falling through again the only ones which are falling they're falling from from the edges 
and that is also great. Now, we need those particles to make them chase him. The way we're gonna do that, we're gonna select our particle system, go down to physics. Now on physics type, we change this to voids. Let's see what happened, we're gonna play it. Now you can already see they act differently, but we don't really have to control over how they're acting, they're just spreading out. And I can show you the reasons right now. If we go down here under void brain, we can see that this is what the, bro uh, what, what the voids are thinking. They're separating and they're flocking, which is kind of counterintuitive because it's like basically for birds because they separate, they're still keeping close together. So now we could change those values here or we hit on plus and we have different options here. They could fight something, they can follow a leader or they could flog, we had that. They could avoid collision, but we're gonna use goal. And here under goal, we need to select our goal. For me, it's my little Miho here. Whatever you have, that's what you're gonna select. Now, when you play it, you can see that some of them, they already feel like chasing him, but not all of them. And the reason for that is that this order is very important. Whatever is on top is gonna to be the priority. And the second one is the second priority, and the third one is the third priority, and so on. So what we need to do is bring the goal to the top and we can't just drag and drop it unfortunately it's kind of stupid you have to click on it and then hit the arrow up arrow up so it's on the top now now when we watch the animation we can see they're chasing him now under movement since we're working with cockroaches here there's different things right now it's like really the settings are for birds but we want cockroaches which stay on the ground so we don't allow flight we do allow land and allowing climbing could also be interesting if you want your particles to climb over objects which we don't have in that case so only allow land for now now when we play it they're all going in the right direction you can see that they're disappearing here and the reason for that is that every particle has a lifetime so under emission you can see different things the number means how many particle, par particles are being emitted. So right now it's a thousand. Let's change this to 10. Now you can see that it's only gonna be a few particles following him. If that's what you want, it's perfect. But in that case, we want a lot. We want a lot of particles. We want a lot of cockroaches chasing him. And don't worry right now that it's just like halos because we're gonna change the model later. We're just worrying about the general animation for now. So we have the number of particles. The seed means you can just go through different seeds and it just changes it up a little in case you're not happy with how they are arranged. Usually it's not necessary. Now the frame start and frame end can be very important. You can keep it on one for now, but eventually you're gonna realize if you want the shot to start like they're there already, then you have to start the, uh, the the frame start like in a negative time like 10 frames before so even if you start here it they're like there already once you bake it they would be like halfway in, in. i hope that makes sense and frame and let's say 200 this is how long our animation is and the lifetime is right now they're only living for 50 frames that means at 50 the first particle is starting to die and the particles which are being created at frame 50, they're gonna die at frame 100 and so on. Generally, you wanna keep those particles, you wanna keep them alive as long as your animation goes. So let's keep it on 200. If you start the simulation earlier, like negative 50 or so, then you want to increase this lifetime number also by 50. And the lifetime randomness is if you want to have them die a little random also not important for that case so now when we play we increase the lifetime you can see that they're gonna be following him for longer amazing now one problem is that they're faster than my subject and they shouldn't be i want them to be the exact same speed or a little slower and to dial that in that really can take a little but in general those are the settings under physics you have the max land speed 
pretty self-explanatory. The higher the number, the faster, faster they can move. Okay, when I increase this by a lot, let's see what happens. See how fast they are. They even, you know, surrounding him and whatnot, which also can be cool. But in our case, we want to keep this number smaller. Let's say three. They're still a little faster than him. Let's do two. That's great. Now, that's not the only number which impact the speed of our particles because we also have the max land acceleration. Right now it's on 0.5. If we increase this number, they accelerate faster, which is which could be something we want. Or if you want them to start slower and speed up slower, then you decrease this number. See, now they're taking their beloved time. We're gonna keep it on 0.5 for now. Now the land personal space can be that they need more space in between themselves. So you can increase this number and you can see that they try to avoid each other a little more. And all of that can also be changed by the mass here. If they have one kilo, they move slower as as opposed to if they were let's say uh, 0.1 kilo see now they're moving way faster and which is fine cockroaches are very light so let, let's keep it there and now it's all about dialing in for example i don't like how they come so close together because getting to their goal is their first priority so now we're going to go back to our settings here and under under here, you can change the rule fuzziness. That means it impacts the other rules more than this one. And that already looks better. So they're still chasing our guy mainly, but also it takes the other two void brains more into account. And now they're still just a tiny bit too fast. So I'm gonna go back to my settings for the speed and turn that back into one. And that's perfect. I'm very happy with that. Now it's time to turn those little balls here into actual cockroaches. And there you have different options. Me personally, I'm not a modeler. So I downloaded a model from Blender Kit. It looks like this. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that's what it looks like. And it's even animated. And then I can replace all those little balls with those cockroaches. But to be honest, I only did that because my shot was kind of close. Imagine you have a very wide shot of the entire room and the cockroaches attack something. You don't even need such a detailed model because see, see how detailed that is? It's more for a close up or something like that. So you don't really need this if you're uh, further away. So to keep this simple, we're just going to make our own roaches. I'm just going to keep him for like references. So. In order to replace those balls with cockroaches or our model of cockroaches, we just go somewhere behind our camera where we the camera is not going to see it. Hold shift, right click somewhere behind it so we can make our own model of a cockroach. Shift A. I'm going to keep it very low poly so it's like faster to render and I'm just going to make an icosphere tap so we can go into edit mode. So now I'm just going to make him a little longer on, on the uh, Y axis. And that's already good enough for me, to be honest. You can give him a few legs if you want, just so it looks a little more detailed, but it's not really necessary here. This is a leg. Going to make another leg just so it looks a little more abstract. Put it in there. Nice. That should do. Now let's shade smooth. That's our cockroach now. It's basically, when you look at this, it's just as good as this one, right? Just as detailed. Just kidding, it's not, but like I said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be that detailed. We're just going to give it a material. New. Let's call it roach material. I'm just going to change the color so it kind of looks like more roachy. Let's make it dark brown, shiny, specters on. Okay, good enough. Now, we need to replace all those little balls here with one of those. And that's very simple. We click on our particle emitter and find render. Under render as, you can see that they're rendered as halos. Now we need to change this to object in that case. If you have a collection, it's a collection, but in that case, it's an object. And under here, instance object, I'm gonna select the model we just made. And now voila, you can see 
it's our little cockroaches. Now under scale, you can uh, adjust the scale of your roaches. So when you hold shift, you can adjust the scale to the right size you want it. And you can even have a little bit of scale randomness. So it looks like some are a little bigger, some a little smaller. Let's delete this guy, we don't need him anymore. And now if, if we want, we can close our room. I click on my ground here, go and tap edit mode, switch to edge selection, select this edge, this edge, this edge, hold E, hold, uh, click Z so I can make a ceiling, uh, bring up the walls and see that's why it's good to have a human as a reference so we can see how high the ceiling should be. That looks good. And now I'm going to select this edge, th this edge, hit F so it close the ceiling and that's the shot we got. And now it's very easy if I say I don't want 200, I want 2000, I'll just create more. Very simple. And now it's way, way more. To have a little randomness, you can go up to your emitter and turn off random yeah, even distribution. That's gonna make them appear a little less even, which can help the effect. So I made a little window here, so I can have a light shining through, just to make the scene a little more cinematic because uh, I want it to be presentable for you guys. So I don't wanna just deliver some trash. I'm also gonna make a volume box because it always looks badass to have some haze in your scene. In case you wonder how to do that, I made a whole tutorial about that, so go you should check it out and uh, that looks cool. I'm going to adjust the size, the scale of my particles a little because they're, the cockroaches are a little too big for my taste. Yeah, that's better. Here you can see why it's so important to apply the scale. I didn't apply the scale on my ground yet. I, I gave it a material and the, see how stretched out it is when I apply the scale, change it into object. Now I have actual tiles. And when you think you're all done, Hit render and enjoy the result. Again, if you want to recreate the shot exactly the way I did it, you need to shoot real life footage, track it, do what I just did with the particle system, light it properly, composite it, and technically it's the same thing. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about that, please let me know in the comments below and see you in the next video. Ah. Tschüss.